This is a segment edition postulate example taken from your homework. And this one is one of my favorites because it illustrates a couple of important points. So let's go ahead and get started. Point M is between L and N on LN. So what we have here is L, N, and somewhere in between is the point M. Not sure where, but it's somewhere in between. Now it could be anywhere. Um, like for instance, if I say, okay, it's right here, it could be right over here. When you actually draw your picture, avoid putting it exactly in the middle because that may give the idea that you just want to add equal these two things right here. It doesn't mean it bisects. It could bisect. We don't know. We don't really care at this point. LM is x squared minus 20x, so we're going to go ahead and write that in. x squared minus 20x. And this is x squared minus 7x. And of course, the whole thing is 45. So what we're going to do is the segment addition polish of this part plus this part is equal to 45. And we can go ahead and combine like terms. You don't have to actually write it all out if you want, but just make sure that you're combining like terms properly. So we're going to have 2x squared. I got negative 20 of these and negative 7 of these, so I got negative 27 of them. And I'm going to set it equal to 45. Now, this does not look a good candidate for completing the square. It would be rather nasty. I don't feel like doing quadratic formula because I already have the idea that it's factorable. So I'm going to check that out. But quadratic formula, of course, will always work. And when in doubt, just go ahead and use it. So what we're going to do is set this equal to 0. And I picked this one because it is factorable. And I want you to start getting really proficient at factor by grouping. A lot of you came in from the middle school using some shortcut methods. Not a bad thing, but our Algebra 2 teachers expect you to be proficient at grouping. So what we're going to do is look at this. 2 times negative 45 is negative 90. What times what is equal to negative 90 when added together gives you uh, 27? It's going to be 30 and a 3. So we're going to split this up. So it doesn't matter whether you put the 30x or the 3x here. It does not matter. Um, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to make this negative 30x. That means this has to be a positive 3x. Minus 45 is equal to 0. Go away. And I'm going to go ahead and group. And I'm going to factor out GCF. This is using our uh, GCF factoring property. And I have an x minus 15, so I better get an x minus 15 on the other side. And look here, when I factor out the positive 3, I do get an x minus 15. Using my distributive property rules, where this is like a and this is b and c, I'm going to have x minus 15 times 2x plus 3. And remember, this is all equal to 0. Okay, so using our zero product property, we set each one of these equal to zero, and we have x is equal to 15, and x is equal to negative 3 halves. Don't forget what class we're in, though. We're in geometry, not algebra. Algebra teacher, we go yippee a. let's move on. Not us. We're going to go ahead, and we need to find what lm and mm are. So we're going to plug in 15. We'll do a little bit of mental math here. When I plug in 15 here, I get 225 minus, well, 300. This gives me a negative 75. Well, we're not going to have a negative segment length. So this negative 15 right here is called extraneous answer. Extraneous, I can't spell it on this little pad. Extraneous. So that ain't going to work. So let's try our negative 3 halves. Take a look what happens when we put a negative 3 halves there. That's going to be uh, 9 fourths. Okay. And a negative times negative is a positive. And that's going to be um, 10 times 3, which is going to be 30. So it's going to be um, 30 and 9 fourths, 32, that's just 2 and 2, 2.5, 2.25, so 32.25. Okay. And let's plug it into here. And yes, if we have a calculator, this one will likely be on your calculator port. Well, I don't know. We'll see. You have no calculator in the calculator portion on your test. So what we do is uh, 9 fourths. Again, you have 9 fourths. Plus um, 21 halves. 
Well, that's 11.5 and that's uh, 2.25. So we're looking at 12.75, okay? And there you go, There, there's your answers. You have an extraneous solution and you have two good valid exclusions. Now again, the reason I like this particular problem because students have the mindset that if you come up with a negative x, it has to be extraneous. This example, we throw out the positive x15 and the negative 3 has x is our valid solution to the problem. So learn from this, be able to identify extraneous solutions, and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, see you next time.